Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Donitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. <laughs> Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. So check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio only podcast. And we have some very special and unexpected news to uh, let you all know. Uh, Kelly and I are coming to Gen Con 2022 Woo! in Indianapolis in two weeks. After a very serendipitous turn of events, uh, we have decided to uh, take the plunge, drive on down to our good friends in the uh, uh, in the US of A, and come uh, to the best four days in gaming. So if you are going to be at Gen Con this year, uh, stay tuned to our social media um, because we're probably gonna try to do some sort of fan meetup or everything. Um, Gen Con this year is requiring everyone to wear masks in the convention halls, so it might be hard to find us because everyone's going to be in incognito mode. Uh, but we, but if you are a fan of our, our channel, of our show, uh, and you are going to be at the con, we would love to say say hello um, and um, maybe roll a die or two. Um, so we're very excited. We'll, we'll probably be posting some updates on social media about this because this is our first time ever going to Gen Con. We've never, never, ever be get, ever been before. So, Are you, you going to wear the eye patch and a mask? I will wear the eye patch, the goggles, and the mask, uh, yep. just to make it really hard for myself. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are really, uh, really looking forward to that. That will be um, in the first week of August. Incidentally, those uh, the Tuesdays that are bracketing Gen Con, we had already planned on taking some summertime off anyways, so Joe and Jill can go to their cottages. Um, so um, we will be off those two weeks for the regular stream, but of course our video content will be continuing. We so appreciate those of you that have been following along with us uh, live. We've had a couple couple bumps in the road the past couple weeks in terms of scheduling. That's summer for you. Um, so, <laughs> so, but we're we're on track, and uh, we'll uh, we're gonna play some D and D tonight. So let's dive in. Yeah. 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 All righty. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. As three of our heroes, Sebastian, Rudy, and Wrath, finish up their affairs in the great free city of Liberio, far to the southwest, we pan over across the land of Westamar to three other heroes. Wilhelm, Pluto, and Veo. These three now lead a contingent 
of Westamarian soldiers drawn up from the Hooded Lanterns and several Caspian warriors of the House of Jackson as they march from Drakenheim to Geldstadt. Already um, sent ahead on swift steeds, Petra and Ansem, um, at the command of Elias Drexel, had been making arrangements in Geldstadt for the arrival of the king. Um, and so you are waiting to hear the updates on um, at, on where exactly you will be accommodated because, of course, Geldstadt is the largest walled city um, in this sort of southeastern portion of Westamar. And currently, um, the Illyrian forces are marching towards it. Um, the bulk of the Illyrian forces are still um, several uh, several kilometers to the south. But already there are reports coming in that the people of Geldstadt and the Duchess of Geldstadt, Ursula von Sindau, are concerned about whether or not their city will be besieged by the Illyrian forces. And so the missives have been sent for a meeting between Wilhelm alongside Veo and Paluto and representatives from Westamar and representatives from the Silver Order to negotiate some kind of truce. Hmm. Currently, um, currently your, your group, having set out uh, only just a few days ago, has made quite good time on the roads. You passed, you were already far past Emberwood Village, passed that on, on, on your first day, and heading along the roadways away from Drakenheim. And this is a curious trek, because it's almost like leaving and slowly waking up from a nightmare as you move away from Drakenheim. Very slowly, as you get closer day by day towards Landhelm along the roads, life begins to find its way back into the world. Oh, as the visible effects of the contamination surrounding Drakenheim begin to diminish. The, because not only are you moving away from the city of Drakenheim, the vast majority of the contamination from Drakenheim is carried down the Dran River. And the Dran River is flowing off away as well. So by the time your group makes its way to Landhelm, a large market city that is the gateway to the Eastern Vales uh, to, the, to the east, things look mostly normal. Um, and there are you pass through several farming communities just on the edge of the contamination, although there are many that the people show that signs of unease, like, how soon are we going to have to move away from our homes? Are we next to be affected by this? And, indeed, the transition begins as you pass Landhelm. You start to see in many of the towns and villages increased presences of able-bodied men and women taking up arms and beginning to dig ditches and make palisades around their town. Several of the larger communities where there are smaller castles or manor houses are beginning to make arrangements to potentially defend themselves against the march of the Illyrians because their towns and cities don't have walls. They can't defend themselves from an invading army. And in many places, people are either, uh, are even gathering up all of their livestock and their crops in anticipation for the fact that armies are going to do what armies do. And that is pillage the countryside for food and supplies. Already, you have heard of the way that the Illyrians have been doing this, how they have been co-opting the um, co-opting the bounty of Westamar, what 
little bounty it still has these days to feed their forces. Now, you would know that this is not unusual. This is not something that every army in history has behaved this way. But it still stings, knowing that the Righteous Knights are still living off the fat of the land of Westamar as they invade these lands. The words, the words at least have been positive. There have been some skirmishes and outbreaks, but at the very least the Illyrians are letting civilians and non-combatants flee rather than trying to run them down, and they are showing restraint. Their message comes not as, give over your lands and food, or else, or, but rather, the flame needs you to provide for its holy lands. Which, for many in Westamar who do keep the faith of the sacred flame, is a compelling message, nonetheless. Well, I have seen armies do far worse. Far worse? Yes, they're letting they're letting the civilians live. That's uh, that's a good thing. I'm trying to take silver linings where I can get them. As as silver we head linings, to meeting with them, silver order. Silver. Yeah, yes. Maybe they're led by uh, cousin Aveo. They're so hungry. Mm. I have cousins. <laughs> no, they're just. It's, it's. It is. It is a war tactic, but it is also. It, it's. It. It definitely. You see them in a different light. They stand for things, the flame. It, I would, I would be one of those that would, I'm sure many are turning to the, the flame in the, in the face of this oppression. It just means that we, we have to do something soon. We'll also keep in mind that, um, in order to negotiate with, uh, these paladins and knights from Illyria, we might need to let the flame into Westmar a little stronger if we're to ally with them. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of give and take here, but rule number 53, in a negotiation, never make the first offer. We should hear out what they want and then make adjustments according to what we need. It's best who's, to let your opposition set the bar. Whose rule who's, who's rule is that? My, mine. Uh, my father's. Sorry. Fatherly I, wisdom. It's yeah. on point. I yeah, live fair. by fatherly wisdom. So yes. But what do we do if they also know that rule? Yeah, are these common rules? Uh, oh, come to think of it, I mean, they were very common in our household. Um, but I, I, I don't think everybody has a copy of these rules. Uh, I've never come across anybody who at least recites them the way I do. So yeah, me neither. There you go. I think as long as we just we don't put all our eggs in one basket, and we hear them out. You know, a little give and take. A little sharing. We really need good. the other group to find the artifacts. Now, I'm sure your friend, uh, the Crow, and Rudy and Wrath, uh, at least Rudy and Wrath are going to, uh, at least, at least Rudy is going to be able to keep <laughs> them in check. I hope. Uh, I'm a little I'm, worried. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm frankly, we we should not have let Sebastian go off on his own. I'm sure they're. Do you not trust? A curious, he has a curious nature to him, and so, so, who's gonna stop him when he says, "What's the worst that could happen?" He's gonna walk you into know? stuff, and and it's like, and if I'm not there, I mean, 
Rudy's big though, so I I do have a lot of faith. Like I I I've seen Rudy, and I I have a feeling that she's gonna have to do a lot of heavy lifting. I, I can assure you, Rudy has ten children, all of which <laughs> oh. are as foolhardy, and they also like to get themselves into trouble as much as Wrath does. And Rudy does a fine job most of the time keeping tabs on Wrath, so I'm sure she can handle mage sitting <laughs> to troublemakers. Are all mages troublemakers? Is this just I've the way of it? I've come to learn this, yes. Huh. Well, I, I'm sure they're staying out of trouble. Uh, Sometimes they act a little selfish, a little hot-headed, arrogant, um, careless. Uh, <laughs> these are all words I would use to describe <laughs> most of the mages. I Except thought... for River. River. River is He's one of those solid. ones that just consistent. Big fan of River. Yeah, River seems really nice. And Eldrick seems like he has a good head on his shoulders as well from my brief encounters with him. But yeah, yeah, he's 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 up to something though most of the time. But River mm -hmm. seems to be in the forefront with us. Nevertheless, so the mages of the academy have withdrawn themselves from these negotiations lest they ignite further conflicts and disagreements uh, for the, for the time being. So, so we can talk about them behind their back. <laughs> um, if you do need to contact the Academy, there are ways that you'll be able to reach out for them to, to them. Um, you, you do know that uh, the Duchess of Geldstadt, Ursula von Sindo, does have a court mage. You haven't been introduced to them yet. Um, but as a court mage of the Amethyst Academy, they would be able to get you in contact with Eldrick and River should the should the need arise regardless. Um, but there, but otherwise, the the academy has decided to step back from this stage of the negotiations, in the hopes that it will diffuse any potential conflicts. Um, as a as a brief recap for myself, um, last I spoke to my father, the Illyrians were very upset at my house. Um, is that still an issue? <laughs> Are they still mad at me? Um, you're gonna have to ask around and find out. <laughs> I, uh, I, I have a feeling that my presence might might shift some some glares, especially with what I've done in the past. I'm not proud of it. It was a moment that I've chosen to accept and move forward with but i ha happily contributed in the in in in, a, in the heat of the situation to kill paladins and now we have to talk to them are you referring to the duel yeah and for the record like we couldn't even bring sebastian because he killed like 30 more than i did so uh, like uh, yeah he's not he's not i've good. i've read the report pluto and the terms of an illyrian duel are quite solid and i mean i've I'm fought my hold... fair share of illyrian duels myself and uh i mean in practice uh mm. i was trained in them but the law is the law you were challenged to a duel you won the duel uh you know sebastian may have done some terrible things in the moment but I'm sure the Illyrians would understand that uh, he was retaliating against a move of theirs. Like it's yeah, and and I I will do my best to defend myself, but I kill the commander with a holy sword. So like it's it just doesn't look good on paper. Oh, um, Pluto, remember that you've you have been grown so much as a warrior and a person since that time and i'm sure the illyrians will see it in your heart that you know you you're sorry because <laughs> you're sorry yeah and wilhelm yeah. wouldn't have brought you if he thought that this was going to cause even a worse war than it was and if so you could blame it on him yeah yeah this is on you now wilhelm this is like fully listen <laughs> as, you carry this this burden now not as, me as bad as it might be to say this uh when you say it looks bad on paper, 
papers only look as bad as those who write them. Again, if we use the right terminology in this argument, we state that it was an Illyrian duel, that it was handled fair and square. Mm -hmm. A winner, we, we have a victorious winner. No, the, the duel was over. The duel ended. Pluto was victorious. It should have been the end of it. And if anyone wants to duel over it, I'll happily <laughs> duel them. I'll duel, I'll duel, duel them till dawn. Pluto, well, you and I both know that I'm the better duelist. Uh, that's sort of a bold statement, Ipatchy. <laughs> Do we need uh, to rehash could, uh... the, uh, when you were at my castle, uh, what was that, like 15 or so years ago? I can't quite remember the you... dates. I'm getting dates mixed up here. When you were at my castle that one time and you drunkenly challenged me to a duel and, um... I showed you then, as I could easily show you now, who the better duelist is. I'm not half as drunk as I was then, and <laughs> so it's going to be a totally different story. Look, the point is, is that we do have some things that they want, and if we are going to attempt to find peace um, between Ignatius and the Shield, um, it might get us closer. We can also hope the Illyrians um, just want to do the right thing. As you continue talking, um, Elias Drexel approaches the group of you. Beg pardon, don't mean to inter inter interject, but I do have some, some news. Go ahead. Yeah, I've uh, just received some contact from one Yester von Sindau. Um, uh, I, I believe that he, he is the court mage of Ursula von Sindau. The situation seems to be that her own son is a mage born and is assigned to her house. Bit awkward if you ask me, but a lot of nobles do this. The They've made arrangements for us to lodge at an estate. It's the Schroeder, the, the Schroeder estate. The family was killed during the Civil War. Mm. Um, and the household was left to the family cats. I'm not quite sure if anyone's actually there anymore now. So, uh, but from what, what I understand, the, the manor is a fine place and Petra and Ansem are making sure that it will be well acquainted by the time we get there. Do the cats own the house? No one's sure if the cats are in the house or if they're not in the house anymore. But is the will of the house, like the, the, the deed of the house... Legally in, binding. Legally bound to the cats. We actually won't know until we actually open the house. Uh, where's Wrath when you need him? He would love this. <laughs> He'd be so excited. <laughs> Cat ownership. Like, I get it with you, Veo, but for some reason... Hey. Are it they really make... cats, or are they like me, like cat folk? Yeah, because that would that would that would track. It's not clear from what I understand. <laughs> uh, interesting. Um, well, at least we have lodgings. That's a bonus. Silver linings yet again. Yes, we'll make sure that we have sentries that are posted around. Lord Commander, you may want to double check on the situation make sure the security is up to your standards it is a manor not a castle so the defensive it will not be any that defensive if there are any problems mm. are, are we to expect uh the illyrians wouldn't make a move against us would they well who knows a war if it's strategic they might take their chances I, the only i doubt it the the, the schroeder estate is a few miles outside Geldstadt proper. It's not within the with within the city walls itself. Uh, it uh, I feel it is improper for us to invite the Illyrians inside our city wall when we are at war. I agree, and I mean it is best rule number twenty six to expect everything is a trap, and that way we'll stay alive. So best to be cautious. The main Illyrian forces are roughly 200 kilometers south of the city. 
by my best estimations, even if they were to uh, make a forced march, it would still take them the better part of two or three weeks to actually reach Geldstadt. Nevertheless, the, the reach of the Silver Order is quite long. There is a considerable contingent of Griffin aerial forces with them, and those forces are capable of rapid deployments. Their Griffins, if they wanted to, could attack within a day. I didn't realize they had deployed the Griffin Riders. Um, the scouting we... reports indicate that there's at least 200 of them. 200 Griffin Riders? Yes. Apparently. Well, at least we have the broken military of Westamar. Yes, apparently the they had originally deployed with 50, and the... The, the they ask for reinforcements and of course when they're coming in by air they come fast so what you're saying is the negotiation there, no pressure on the negotiations is what you're saying 200 sarcasm 200 elite aerial cavalry the silver order couldn't take geldstadt by my guess but they could do a lot of damage. Well, we want to avoid as much damage as possible. And um, luckily I've been brushing up on my leadership skills. I have uh, some notes from my father in this book about leadership and uh, uh, giving hearty uh, uh, speeches. So uh, like, like, yes, I, I will g calm the flames so to speak. Ooh. That was a pun. Do we know yes. if um, do we know if anyone started to clear out of Geldstadt? No. People are clearing in to Geldstadt. It is one of the only large cities for hundreds of miles. For, for, in this area we've, we have people that could potentially take, seek refuge from the Octonwald we could have people that could be seeking refuge here from much further so south. This is a bit of an unprecedented situation because for most of our history, Westamar has been defended from attack to the south thanks to the gap in the mountain rings. There is the fortress city of Leuten, which is one of the furthest holdings Unfortunately, Leuchten was your late aunt's seat of power. Mm. And the current, well, shall we say, the current ruler of Leuchten, Boris the Bold, was my mm. counterpart in her forces. Boris the Bold has declared for the Illyrians. Uh, I suppose that's to be expected from Boris uh, and from the remnants of my aunt. Well, <sighs> well, that's the ghosts of history for you. Well, even then, if we are able to make an alliance with Illyria... It might help to unite Westamar. Perhaps. We'll see. Hmm. It's, it's a difficult situation. Not if there's a... If there's a march on Geldstadt now, from what you said, there's going to be a lot more civilians there that are going to suffer than would normal because of this disruption. There's one problem. There are reports of some civilians, some citizens, who have been making active attacks against the Silver Wolf. Okay. Oh no. They are worshippers of the Falling Fire, converts. That's just causing more problems than we need right now. We will have to tread carefully, Wilhelm. Your Majesty, there is a very large number of people who have taken up the cause of that Lucretia Matthias 
I don't agree with it. But I want you to know. We currently have a foreign invasion of our hands. But we could just as easily have a peasant revolt on our hands as well. Do you see any way to avoid both? If you can figure out a way to appease the the, the Divine Matriarch and Lucretia Matthias at the same time, I am all ears. Oh, that's a conundrum. Is there any way to show them what what we've seen? What we know about delirium. If they knew the truth, because not many do, they would know Lucretia doesn't speak what they think she does. Those who have taken the sacrament, from what I understand, are well aware of Lucretia's visions. Both the Illyrians... Both the, the sacred flame and the falling fire are aware of what delirium is, yet Lucretia has chosen to worship it, while the flame has decided to destroy it. I don't think opening their eyes to the truth will change either of their opinions. That it'll destroy the world if we let it run its course? Lucretia seems to be okay with that. Yeah, as uh, just so I understand, it's it's Lucretia pushing for the the redeeming the redeeming qualities of uh, this golden delirium, while the Illyrians seek to simply smash it out of existence. It might be that we can win some people over with with that, but I remember Wilhelm, don't you have a rule about that? You can't reason someone out of a position that they never reasoned themselves into to begin with? Ah, uh, yes. Rule number 93. Oh. I thank you, Elias. You, <laughs> you know my rule. Need to take some notes about these rules. I'm yeah, all behind Elias. Know about these rules except us? Yeah. I think so. We will see what happens. Nevertheless, I suppose if you ask the Illyrians to help us put down a peasant revolt, that might be one solution. Ooh. Again, we might be able to do it without many casualties. Uh, Veo, you might be onto something. Lucretia and those in Drakenheim who are following her might know, but those who are making the pilgrimage might not know the full truth. If we can sort of remove the disease from the body, if you understand my meaning, then we can save majority of the people who think they know what they're getting into with Lucretia Matthias. It's possible. It's possible. Only yeah, but- there are a way to show them um, what we've seen, what Sebastian has seen by touching the delirium heart. I, some sort of magic to show them. Unfortunately, rule number 94, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. We have extraordinary claims, but all we have are the words of Sebastian Crow and Lucretia Matthias to go on. Not everybody can go in and touch the delirium heart. And the fact that you two were there when Sebastian did it is is incredible. It's an incredible feat of courage and strength. And it's I, no I, big deal. You no, know, it's just every day this, this things just that we do. What Dragon Dragon Force does. It's just, yeah. It gives me a little bit of faith in this Sebastian Crow. Pluto, I've always had faith in you. And Veo, 
I'm seeing what you're made of as a Lord Commander, and so far, I'm impressed. Thanks. I tried. <laughs> the only final update I have is that I have dispatched, well, Petra oversees things getting set up at uh, Schroeder Manor. Ansem will be sending some envoys ahead to let the Silver Order know that they should send their representatives. Any idea who we'll be meeting with? Hopefully we can... I have requested the presence of Ophelia Reed. We've hmm. dealt with her before, and I think that she would be a solid mediator to the experience. There was another. We've also had very... I have I have good relations with... Um, insert name here. Uh, who was it that we helped... At the ah. Duchess, oh. out of character. Uh, the woman. Um, the woman, I got it. Gloria Hackfield. Yes! Yes. yes. Uh, Gloria Hackfield, is she available? Um, having her in the meetings might do us a big favor, because we did help her. I certainly... I'm afraid of one thing, I have to confess. Yes. This contingent of reinforcements that came from Griffin Rest Tower in Illyria. Over a hundred Sky Cavaliers of the Silver Order. That kind of force can only mean one thing. No. It's likely that the Grand Paladin is with them. I've heard stories. Is he Rain big? Pal yeah. <laughs> is he? Is he? Sounds. A big, uh, he sounds uh, shiny. Sounds I'm very shiny. I'm sure the stories have been exaggerated, <laughs> but uh, people have told tales in Kesselholm when I was a kid. Um. Even even as a teenager, whispers just from anybody that you that mention him. They say he's 800 pounds of muscle and armor. They say he has a hammer that knocks the heads off of his enemies in one fell swoop. They say he rides the most vicious griffin that's ever graced Westamar, Illyria, or Caspia, or any of the continent. Mind you, again, th the stories chalk him up to be some sort of ruthless battle monster of a paladin, but I, I, I'm i sure they're exaggerated. I mean, I used to hear stories of my father that he was um, a vicious warrior and things like that. Even the stories of Rudy Whitaker, uh, if you meet the lady, uh, are far different in the stories than when you actually talk to her in person. So it's just stories that I've heard. I met Uriel Radley once years ago. I don't think he's 800 pounds. He's actually quite lanky, but very fit. <sighs> there you go. Rumors and stories. I can handle a lanky paladin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know how things go. Messages get passed along, embellished. He's this big, then he's this big, then he's this big. Exactly. There's one thing that I'm concerned about. Theodore Marshall was his protege. Right. Not very, uh, not a very good protege. Am I right? Am I right? And it's too early to... Too early to I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, Lord Jackson. If that man challenges you to a duel, I think you're dead. Well... Oh, Pluto could take him. Right, mm -hmm. Pluto? I would fight with honor, no matter what. I mean, I don't know how many trolls this guy's killed, <laughs> but for the first time in a long time, I'm, I'm trying to come here for... I'm not Pluto. looking for a fight. 
you know, Ignatius, the shield of St. Vitruvio. Look, I, I might not be perfect, but what's what they're marching towards what what we're doing in drakenheim it's 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 a mess and we're trying to figure out but the kresha the illyrians i don't think they've figured it all out either and if we can sit down at the table we can maybe hammer something out i hope so <sighs> very well Pluto, you've grown up so much since we first entered the rat nest, and it's like your meat apple has grown two sizes since then. I lost then. a lot of good men the week before, and <laughs> uh, that day, <laughs> and uh, it's given me a lot of time to think. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank Pluto, you. if Uriel Radley does challenge you to a duel, I suggest we stand our ground on a Caspian duel much more in favor of you walking away with your head intact. Plus, I hear you're quite the monster slayer. Yes. Caspian duel? Actually, uh, I murdered a demon recently. A demon? There you go. So, Veo, if you're unfamiliar, a Caspian duel is rather than fighting each other, the two participants of the duel, possibly hiring an entourage of two to three other people, oh will then go on a monster hunt and either see who can kill a monster the fastest or in more likely cases, see who can kill the bigger monster in a set amount of days and come back with a trophy. It's uh, the Caspian way of sporting duels without having to murder each other after several years of killing each yeah, other. Yeah, we, we lost a lot of, like we, we found that it was really hard to fight uh, external battles with all the internal battles. So it's a, uh, there's a lot of history there. Well, that's definitely going to be in your favor, Pluto. I mean, I'm, it's Caspian in its name. So it should yeah. be right up your alley. And I, I have a real good feeling about the King's Moot this year. So like with, with the demon under my belt, it's, uh, things are, things are looking up. Very well. Looking up my way. Jackson has a strong. We've now traveled past, past Landhelm, so is there anything else in, that you would like to arrange before we arrive in Geldstadt? We should be there in a... In a if, uh, if, if we're dueling, uh, Veo, can you um, use that, that seal on me? <laughs> if, oh, if, uh, oh, yeah. If, if that hammer comes after my head, you'd, uh, you don't mind... Uh... I'll make sure before we go into any negotiations that I will give... The bestest command that the Lord Commander can give to make sure that you're covered. All right, Pluto? We're, we'll avoid a duel as best we can. I, I hope for peaceful negotiations. But if it comes to it. I, 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 I've i dealt with Illyrians. They, they seem to have that single focus. And it's, it's going to take a lot to turn this ship around if... Uh, how deep they are into Westamar. Uh, there's mm -hmm. the they've come all this way, and we we are going to need to ne negotiate our socks off. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, Alma, I I I I think you're going to have to turn turn that charm up to a a, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping it's simple enough to serve them some humble pie with the words, but you know, sometimes they think with their swords first, so we'll see what comes of it. Well, with that, you spend the next two or three days traveling past Landhelm along the Eastern river, uh, crossing the Eastern river, which flows into, which eventually flows into the Dran river. And then over the bridges towards Geldstadt. The, in the distance as you approach, you can see that Geldstadt itself, um, in the distance, twinkles with orange, red, 
street lamps. Uh, for Geldstadt is a wealthy city. Um, it lies along the a small tributary that flows from the Glitter Mountains into the Eastern River and then into the Dran River, known as the Glitter Wash, a river that famously is known for excellent gold panning. Hence the wealth of Geldstadt and its na and the, indeed its name. Um, the city is well adorned, protected by its sturdy walls, and definitely has a wealthy populace. Their houses finished with slate rooftops and plush purple curtains. Wealth and opulence, in fact, are on full display. Um, as the boulevards and the streets of Geldstadt are decorated with flower beds and, uh, and intricate cobblestones. The city itself sort of straddles the Glitterwash River with a great bridge leading up to the wall. So it's on one side of the river and then the walls surround it and protect it up against the, the river itself with one bridge extending over the Glitterwash, Glitterwash River. Although you are actually coming from the other side uh, the side so, so you're since you're approaching from the north you're on the side of the city that actually is on the same side of the river the glitter wash mm -hmm. river as you um and geldstadt um itself has is well known for its urban architecture and the fact that it actually has many great galleries it is well known for having great artists several theaters as well and the Duchess herself, Ursula von Sindau, as you get a few, as you get within a day's ride of the city, she does dispatch her heralds to welcome you, uh, bring bring her missive, extend her invitations, and guide you sort of the rest of the way towards um, Schroeder to the Schroeder estate, where you'll where you'll be staying, where she's made arrangements. Um, the messenger brings a letter from Ursula von Sindau saying that. Um, respectfully, she would prefer to not attend the negotiations personally, if that is acceptable to the king. It is. And um, with, nevertheless, um, she does state in, in her letter that should it, it, should it be necessary, she is happy to provide whatever whatever other accommodations are necessary. And as you arrive at the manor house, there are several carriages and wagons that are outside where a staff has been provided from Ursula von Sindau to help with the, the, the manor house itself. The estate, is, the estate is rather overgrown. It seems like it once had a old hedge maze of its own and its own vineyard which has fallen into disuse perhaps in the past several years. But the large two-story manor house is richly appointed, and already you can see that there are several gardeners at front that are making sure that the entrances are, are accessible and they provide the, the keys and everything that are needed to your people to start using the, the, the manor itself. And Elias Drexel immediately counsels with you, Veo, to make sure that several hooded lanterns actually go in first and make sure that there's no traps. Yes. Send in a few to make sure that no traps, well-stocked food. Let me know how the kitchen is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Actually, what we can do here is... We're back. Yeah, I have a bit of the outlook of it, if you want to look at the floor plan of the manor itself. So this is the ground level of the manor house. Um, it's not bad. Yeah, so the front from the front entrance right up over here, there is a Ooh. kind of a, a large landing room and welcoming area, and then there is a great hall, as well as several side and sitting rooms. The kitchens, storage, quarters for the servants as well, storage rooms, and then the upper level is well appointed with a balcony and several private be bedrooms as, as well. 
So it is up to you as the hosts of this affair to decide how you would like to utilize this space for the negotiations. Um, I think that we should, I, I'm open to suggestions. So, you know, King switch off, Wilhelm on, let's just talk as friends, uh, open to input. But I think that this great hall looks like a prime place to hold negotiations and perhaps Veo, you you have an, an affinity for food, I believe. You um, know me so well. Do you have like a, a a good chef amongst the hooded lanterns? Oh, did we bring Chud with us? He's he's got to be part of your uh, very close entourage. <laughs> yes, I feel like I there, wouldn't have left home without him. I need something there, to remind me. Yes, there is there is a, a legendary. Apparently, there is a legendary hero known as Chud Hopkins, who is also an astounding cook for the. Uh, perhaps Chud does it all. Well, I've I've actually heard stories. I heard that he one time slay a dragon single handedly. Yeah, literally single yeah. hand. It was yeah. amazing. And, and then he and then he roasted the entire dragon for like the entire company, and and it was it was delicious. It was like a slow roasted it's, dragon. I, I've got to ask so how did rosemary you... spices. Oh, yeah. oh, and, and, and and I've also heard that he's so humble that when he was offered the position of Lord Commander for being the greatest hood lantern of all time, he declined and said he just wanted to work in the kitchen. Oh, yeah, I would have stepped him down for him. He is fantastic. Yeah, I don't both think in the kitchen and on the battlefield. Uh, to, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, perhaps Chud could prepare a meal for our guests that because be if they're well fed, they might be a little happier to negotiate. Maybe he yep, can prepare something on my bucket list since we're you know traveling, have something special. Indeed. Cool. So I just put some some tokens down. Um, so several of the elite members of the King's Guard of the of the Hooded Lanterns are also here for you as as well. And it is up to all of you to decide how you want to orchestrate uh, all, all of this. What do you guys okay. think about like a, a a line? Like we get all the guards like saluting as the uh, Illyrians enter, like pay respects. Um, or is there something flamey? Like we can, yeah, we can do flames. We can do torches. <laughs> I knew a guy that did really great flames, but he's off on another mission. Um, <laughs> what I what I think we could do though is um, maybe do like a sort of like a weaponless sort of situation to try to encourage like the peace talks. Yeah. So right. like, and and we could you know place Ignatius somewhere on like a mantle. To uh -huh. sort of be like, this is, you know, like, oh, we can do one of the cauldrons of flame. They love those. They love their cauldrons of flame. Yeah, if we could get a, like, central flame. Like a brazier. Uh, uh, is it a brazier, is it? Brazier. <laughs> not a brazier. You're missing <laughs> me. I, my mind's in the gutter. Uh, <laughs> get, get one of those, like, uh those big old bowls full of fire. They love those. Right the in the they, they They go nuts over them. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right, so we get a brazier of flames. <laughs> we, we centralize that. We do a weaponless ceremony. Yeah. We have the zone guards. Of truth? Zone of truth? We just, we drop a zone of truth. Mm. Yeah, we ask all- We start if, in the zone, zone of truth and we welcome them into it. Yes, we, we offer them to enter yep. the zone of truth. Do you? There's no one amongst your contingent that can cast the spell. You would need to invite a flame keeper. Pluto, you can, will do it. You can, can cast. Can we make truth, Ignatius do it? Can yes. we make a? Yep. Yep. I mean, Ooh, yeah. yeah. We we always just Ignatius makes me speak my mind. <laughs> it's just good to have other people having to do deal with it too. Um, definitely appetizers, and then a main course. Yeah, like, uh, what's Chud I want to set like? a good, hearty, you know, meal with friends kind of vibe. You know? So we're going to, is that where you want the brazier of flame? That's yes. nice. That's really yes. nice. And That's really uh, nice. I will sit at this head table with Pluto and Veo on either side of me. And then Elias and... Um, Can I make a pitch? Yeah. 
We want everyone at the same table. That's that's the that's the you know. There's underlying messages. We 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 get it. We do the big table, but we go sideways. You know, the chair. Maybe that's where Ignatius sits. Do we want to do it where? It's like them, us, them, us. Yeah, them. we do the like not the even across the table. <laughs> we just like mix everybody. You gotta up. sit beside a stranger. You gotta learn what what their hobbies are. You. Gotta- this could be great. Um, perhaps we even offer Leo, Uriel great. Radley the, the 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 big seat. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, but there is a balance of showing power. We don't want to let them know that they are running the show. The true, Lord Commander true. makes a very good point. You uh-huh. are the king, and they are invaders here. Yeah. I will take the big seat uh, to show confidence. Uh, confidence is key. Is one of my rules. Yes. Okay. So it's like friendly, but not too friendly. You know, yeah, they are at it. war. You in can our sit country, at the table, so. but it's our table. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I think that it is important that we uh, present ourselves as friendly, but not weak. Mm. Indeed. Yes. The yes. Silver Order is honorable. And I would not expect them to try an attack on us. But what if they do? Well, if they surrender their weapons, I suppose several of them have uh, magic powers of sorts. If their bodies are weapons. Well. It's also true that we have our forces here. But if they did opt to deploy their aerial forces, we would be in trouble. Yes. Do we and need lookouts? The, I, yeah. I'm going to tape, I'm, I'm like, good point, and I'm going to stick a dagger under the chair. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't scream <laughs> insecurity... <laughs> Just, um, why don't we just have really just get you a really big dinner knife? And we go, oh, he just he really needs to cut his meat, but it's like <laughs> clearly a weapon. <laughs> and we go, oh no no no, it's totally ceremonial and it's to cut the beef. It's for yeah, it's for the king's m- steak knife. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a king's sword. Steak knife. It's it's a sword. <laughs> I mean, one thing is is like the, you know. We're trying to give and take, and th- if they're going to attack, they're going to attack. There's nothing we can do to stop that. Uh, the, we can know about it. That's always ahead the, of time. The guards will remain armed. There'll be there will be two stationed at the front of this room. The rest will be stationed outside in the front hall, but they will all be armed. And do we know if there's a basement or a cellar or some sort of safe exit for the king? Ah. Yeah, is there like a secret passage? There are cellars beneath the storerooms and the kitchen. Yes. Sweet. Okay, Wilhelm, this is really important. There is a rather expansive wine cellar. Uh, Wilhelm, Veo and I, we have a code word. And it's important that you become privy to it mm. so you know what to do. Top secret. Some people yell fire. Some people yell help. Uh, usually we just yell, get out or escape <laughs> or... No, no, no. That can all be confused. Yeah. <laughs> it's, How uh, can that be? Multiple, multiple <laughs> things. So if you hear one of us yell pork chops, pork. you get out. Okay. Pork chops. Yes. Yeah. In that, what, pork that, yeah, and not not like past the pork chops. It's like it's like a single pork chops. We're going to be eating dinner, and I was actually thinking pork chops might be a delicious <laughs> yeah. option. Yeah, it, it, and, and we've had that situation, I'm sure, happen. Yeah. And you're telling me this is less confusing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Oh, okay. So um, even if we have pork chops, it's well. Pork chops. 
you know? Yeah. And we'll be yelling it and you'll probably <laughs> see someone on fire. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's Almost it'll be really always clear. Someone's on fire. Yeah. 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 So we should not serve pork chops. <laughs> yeah. Let's <laughs> let's avoid do a roast. confusion. Let's do a roast. Yeah. yeah like good a, good like idea. Like tender line or oh, something. Minotaur Prime Rib. Minotaur Prime Rib. <laughs> minotaur Prime Rib. A prime rib it is. <sighs> but I believe that that's only in the sense of things uh going south and we will do our best to evacuate you and mm. get you out of Gelstead uh immediately. Mm. Very well. Well, um so we'll serve food. We'll handle negotiations here. We'll all sit at one table. What we might be able to do is push the two tables there to either end to form a sort of U shape of tables Ooh. so that we can accommodate everybody. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully those on the inside don't get too close to the fire. <laughs> we'll make sure there's enough space. Who would you like to actually invite into the delegates? Um, I mean, Ophelia Reed, uh, if we can get uh, Hackfield, she would be welcome. Uh, I suppose it would be rude not to invite Uriel Radley. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, if they have any flame keepers with them, or possibly any renowned Silver Order members that they would like privy, we will allow um, up to five other individuals to join us for dinner. And we will have us three, Eli you, Elias, um, Ansem, Petra, and maybe two or three other of your uh, best Hooded Lanterns who you think, just to show presence, I suppose, to show that we're, we're making peace, we have companies here, we have people uh, sort of bring a human element to it. Is there uh, any royalty of Gelstead that uh, would be present? Uh, they opted to stay out of it, I believe. Yes, we could in extend our invitation to Duchess Ursula von Sindau and her household, but it seems that she wishes to remain absent. I can't say I blame her. It would be disastrous. It the I'll I'll be I'll be honest, the situation the the chances out outside of this, were it not the Silver Order, were they not such honorable warriors, I would not extend this kind type of uh, of hospitality to an invading force. If these were Caspians, they would be planning to attack us. Yeah, we do. That's one of our best tricks. We uh we call it the Caspian horse. We come in. Yeah under the guise of peace. Not, I mean, especially if it was House Jaeger. <sighs> oh, yes. Rough, rough fiends. No honor. No. No. Very well, then. All right. They will likely bring a contingent of their own soldiers beyond that. I believe we should, in the interest of Austerity. We have with us a hundred of our own soldiers. And I will tell them to come with a force of no more than one. And we will match our soldiers to theirs in postings outside. And we will make arrangements for all the soldiers to be fed with as well. Wonderful. Very well then. Any other arrangements that you would like to make before we extend these invitations? Do we know which... Are, we, are they staying over or are they leaving after? That is up to us. We have enough rooms? Yeah? Yes, we do. Ooh. We could accommodate... Obviously, the, the soldiers will, are making our encampments around the estate and in the other servants' quarters and there is a village nearby that can accommodate m most of our other soldiers, but we could accommodate the core Illyrian delegation here. 
I think it would be a kind gesture to offer them housing for their long trip that they've taken. Hmm. We're not going to do any funny business. About I do not want to approach this Elias as a backstab or anything that could instigate war. The goal here is to avoid conflict. The goal here is to make friends. The only thing is, is how do we... What do we have to offer? I mean, again, I, I want to hear what they have to offer first. In exchange, I'm hoping... This, this is the tricky part. And we're going to need to keep this on... The down low. Again, usage of language is going to be important here. Currently, I am not king of Westamar. I do not sit on the throne of Drakenheim. My offers are technically going to be contingent on the fact that I will be king. I can offer the troops of Westamar, the riches of Westamar, and we might have to offer allegiances, um, space for Illyrians to exist in our in our borders, uh, places for the sacred flame to flourish. Um, and I will, if we need to, offer those things, and probably ask them to support my claim to the throne. And what if they want? St. Vitruvio's relics. I think I have some ideas on how we might be able to negotiate that. No doubt they will want them. I'm hoping we can make them an offer that benefits both of us. Very well. I will send the necessary introductions I will ask for them to be here in two days all right let's uh, make this place pretty and I think that that is a good place to take our break a little all bit early right. this time around but I feel like we're gonna want to stick through it afterwards <laughs> okay we'll see you all back here in, in about 20 minutes and we are back from our short rest. We have restocked on all of our potions and consumables, and we are ready to play some more D and D, or or perhaps negotiations and agreements. We'll see how this one works out. <laughs> Decisions and dinner. Decisions and dinner. Yeah, Woo! there you go. It's, it's still D and D. Just still D and D. Yeah. Can't stop. Alrighty. The next two days pass as a flurry of activity, as the Hooded Lanterns, the staff sent by House Sindau, and others make the arrangements to receive the delegation from the Illyrians. The Hooded Lanterns and the forces of Caspians that have marched with you, which number roughly about 100 soldiers, have th thus set up their own sort of encampment with some guard posts around the estate, securing the sort of the area and just making sure that there is sort of a rough sort of defensive perimeter around the estate itself properly. From here, the the there's a nearby hamlet and village where other accommodations have been or may been arranged for any other illyrian soldiers that come with the main delegation this far in the manor house proper the a full security sweep has been finished <laughs> to ensure that there that everything is secure within the building properly um the accommodations on the second and third floor have been made available to you, so each of you can actually have your own private rooms, and guards have been posted day and night round the clock to make sure that there are people watching out, looking out for, for anything. Supplies have come in, and 
Chud Hopkins has been leading the household staff in setting up a quite a roast. And the smell of cooking, of the the slow roast being prepared, of the gravy, of the pastries, is filling the entire manor. <sighs> this is the kind of smell I just want to smell from the rest of my life. <sighs> With that, on the beginning of the second day, several riders arrive and there is a cry out from the hooded lanterns announcing the arrival of an Illyrian herald there are just six knights each of them on horseback the group of them dismount and Elias Drexel comes to the group of you saying that to announce the Illyrians have sent their herald. The the knight, I believe, his name, the leader of them, the herald, is one Sir Mallory. They have been instructed to survey the perimeter to make sure that things are safe for the arrival of High Flame Keeper Ophelia Reed, Knight Captain Gloria Hackfield, as well as High Paladin Uriel Ren. Very well. Um, Sir Mallory is welcome to investigate the premises. Very well. The the Knights of the Silver Order specify they they hand over a letter of instructions that is relayed to you, Veo. And the the knights go about inspecting the grounds, just making sure that everything is proper. Um, and the instructions that you get, Veo, uh, state as follows. Um, that upon receiving the, de the, the, de the delegation, they would, uh, as part of a show of respect, High Flame Keeper Ophelia Reed will light the brazier to consecrate the meeting for the Sacred Flame, and they have agreed to stow their weapons with their, but the, that their weapons will be held in the trust of their own soldiers, not turned over. Hmm. Acceptable terms. Very well. <sighs> We're expecting them later shortly this evening and we will get to this immediately all right the standard practice my king yes as king of westamar you will be seated once all others have arrived very well Prince Jackson, as one as the highest foreign, as the highest ranking foreigner as well, you will come in after. Veo, you will be announced as well. In, in order once their delegation has been received. Feels so fancy. This is proper. I don't Very think well. I've ever been announced before to a room. <laughs> Well, we will have them in the room first. Then we will ask the three of you to. Sounds like berries to me. The rest of the afternoon is tense. Feel like you can cut it with a knife. The manor has been cleaned and well appointed. The halls shined. The smell of the food fills the air but it doesn't dull the tension that you feel. There is a sudden 
upstart later in the afternoon as one of the hooded lan lanterns cries out, Look up! In the sky! And rushing to the windows, the hooded lantern and the balconies, you see an immaculate formation of griffins, nearly two dozen in all, in a flying V formation, flying through the sky towards the the manor. The formation in perfectly in, in perfectly choreographed moves with military precision, the formation shifts and each of the griffins begins to circle around the estate as one by one the Sky Cavaliers land as a group of uh, as another group comes in on horseback around the same time the as e they land outside the estate and, and as and you watch from the balcony as each of the sky cavaliers land their griffin and squires their support team on the ground take the majestic creatures muzzle them and and bring them off to where they're going to where the silver order is going to be keeping keeping them in the midst of this, you catch a glimpse of a golden armored griffin with a man with a bearing a rider who carries a massive warhammer and a tower shield, clad in silver and gold armor and a blue cape, wearing a great helm that conceals his face. You see him land, and the griffin significantly larger than the others um he dismounts it and it takes a large crew of the other silver order squires to calm the beast as they as he he dismounts see pluto look how shiny he is so shiny you look shiny the Elias Drexel says, Oh, impressive. I'm just glad that those formations were dropping fireballs on us. Yeah, me too. You overcooked the roast. <laughs> Be very dry. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, let us let us begin. Your Majesty, take your places. We'll let them. <sighs> Wilhelm we pulls go. himself away from the mirror that he's been standing in front of, reciting lines over and over again and rules. All right. Before we go in, Pluto, just in case. <laughs> Can I bellow a command clearly for all creatures so 300 feet to hear us? Okay. <laughs> I think they're going to hear us. <laughs> <laughs> like um and i say um <laughs> really loudly like we come in peace <laughs> <laughs> welcome to our guests protect your king honor to those who walk through this door you got this <laughs> all right and uh yeah the 12 closest people i guess <laughs> can have uh, 20 temporary hit points and you get advantage on attack rolls and saving throws while you have them. Vale and Paluto, the two of you stand on the balcony as the procession comes in through the entrance. So in the main hall, there is a balcony that overlooks the, the, the main entrance hall that leads into the dining room. And so you stand on the balcony as the group of the Silver Order warriors come in and Ophelia Reed sees you both and she smiles a hesitant smile at seeing the sight of you wave <laughs> we're up here hi as he steps into the room uriel radley removes his helmet um and you can see that he is a rather unkempt man for some someone in such high position 
He has an unshaven beard and is rather scraggy. And contrary to what some of the rumors have said, he's by no means 800 pounds. But he is lanky and is probably six and a half feet tall. Um, so he he's a he's a little bit more gangly than bulky. Um, would be a better way to describe him. The he has a stern look on, on his face, and though he does not carry his signature warhammer, the Judge, um, he does take off his helmet and hand his tower shield uh, and place it. Uh, place it off to the side. With them as well is Gloria Hackfield, um, with her who is w- similarly clad in her full shimmering her full plate armor, which shimmers alongside uh, her. Her and he, she herself looks like she's kind of just come from the field. Um, most of them are garbed as if they were ready for combat not necessarily a diplomatic meeting, um, but they've cleaned themselves up. They... Um, with them come another two dozen Knights of the Silver Order, and you can hear that Uriel Radley and the Lord Commander exchange some words as the various Knights of the Silver Order take up guard posts beside the veterans of the Hooded Lands. Some of them you know fought together at the Battle of Templegate. And so the Procession moves in. Ophelia Reed is joined by three other flame keepers. And so the complete Illyrian delegation consists of Gloria Hackfield, Ophelia Reed, the three flame keepers, and Yuri. <sighs> as, as they step step in, the Lord Command uh, the, the not the Lord Commander. The the Lieutenant Commander announces, May I introduce to you the Lord Commander Veo Senya. And I hop down. <laughs> hop down. <laughs> Prince Ludo Jackson. Caspia. I uh, walk down the stairs. <laughs> and finally, please. Stand and rise for King Wilhelm von Kessel. I, uh, I try to look proud and noble as I walk into the room, but I'm entirely uncomfortable. As you walk into the room, everyone waits for you to take your seat standing. Oh, uh, right. I, I, I sit down. The, your side sits down. The flame keepers sit down. Yuri O'Reilly sits down. And Ophelia Reed steps forward and says, Your Majesty, I hope you will join in as we light this brazier to commemorate our meetings, I would ask that in a gesture of solidarity, let us come around this humble flame, join our hands together, and light it as our people have always done. Of course, it would, uh, it would be an honor to do so. She offers her hand to you, she she outstretch, She reaches out her hand and beckons you to come stand before the brazier. I I do so. I I walk around the table and approach the brazier with her. She beckons the others to stand. Come. This is how we light the flame. I come over. Open hands. 
the flame keepers knowing exactly what to do all reach out their hands to clasp onto the hands of Petra, Ansem, Elias Drexel, and everyone else. Do you all join your hands together? Yes. I say to the person yeah. beside me, I'm like, sorry, I didn't wash my hands before. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> You're licking them. <laughs> my bad. The group forms a circle around the brazier as the as Ophelia Reed steps forward and she speaks the she says that the flame is a light that guides us through the night that seems endless it is a beacon for us to all reach out and see it it is to us to follow it. She begins just to quote a small passage. Let us think on the founder of our faith, Saint Tarna. And so Saint Tarna spoke, and she raised her blade before the throng. Let evil flee before righteousness. Let the innocent live in peace. Let the day come when none need fear or live in ignorance. For that day, I give my life gladly. So said Tarna before the flame. And so we stand before the flame with that message in our hearts. With that, she casts the spell Continual Flame and the Brazier alights. Let us all remember that we may ignore, but we cannot evade the light of the sacred flame. The world is lighted by it. Its warmth spreads everywhere, and it burns in every righteous heart. Let us all take our seats, then. Flame Thank be you. with you. Flame be with you. <laughs> I take my seat. I also just like I again see. apologize. I'm like I'm sorry. <laughs> Your Majesty, you wish to address our guests. Uh yes. Um, I I I stand. Uh, thank you esteemed guests for coming to join us on this day to discuss peace both our nations and all other nations have been suffering and it's time that we unite in the hopes of ending the suffering for all. I would just like to thank each and every one of you for being here today and for meeting us under these conditions and for coming here peacefully. Uriel Radley speaks. Thank you, Your Majesty. It is an honor to be in your presence, if I do say so myself. I'm glad that we can meet with words, share supper, and succor to instead of shedding blood on a battlefield. That would be very regrettable. Uriel, I've heard stories of your great deeds, and it is an absolute honor to meet you in person. As the leader of the Silver Order, I, your name precedes you, and uh, it's just incredible to be in your presence as well. Thank you, Your Majesty. Is it all right if I call you that? I you understand may... you haven't been crowned proper. I'm... 
getting used to it. Um, and I think for the terms of this arrangement, you may call me your majesty in hopes that that is the direction of our futures together is us helping each other out in what's to come. Very well. Very well. Well, I must say, whatever you got cooking out there smells absolutely fantastic, and I so appreciate the hospitality that you have extended to me and my men, and my women, uh, and all those under my command. Got a diverse crowd out here, and uh, it's pleasant to know that they're going to be having a hot meal tonight, because... Well, we've been marching for some time now, and understandably, they've been starting to get sick of, uh, well, bread and preserved meat and dried fruit and all that, so they'll be glad to have a nice roast. Well, we have our very best chef working this evening. We thought it was only appropriate that for such an important meeting, we offer the hospitality of Westamar. Well then... Shall we eat and break bread together as friends before we get down to all this negotiation? Or do you want to mince the words first? I think perhaps it's best that we make friendly first. I, I, I look over at Veo and, and Pluto. Yes, um, <laughs> food first so Please. that we may rejoice, enjoy each other's company before we get into any thicker business that way we can talk as friends after sharing wine and meals together full bellies are full hearts i i like that spirit all right then let's eat <laughs> <laughs> the food that are, so it is a immaculate um prime rib roast beast that comes out served perfectly cooked medium rare um, with smoked salt gravy roast vegetables mashed potatoes and I think the Yanks call them popovers but we call them Yorkshire puddings pastries uh, and then there, there as, as well is a chocolate pudding that is served too. Wow. Just yeah, that's for real. Yeah. No, I'm hungry. It sounds so good. They, Rule they, number they, 92, listen to your gut and it's rumbling. They, they do actually start with a selection of fine Westamarian cheeses as well, which are served in platters uh, with, with some various breads and spreads. So... <laughs> Oh my. Yeah, you gotta start with chemo. chemo. You, you gotta start with the breads and spreads. Uh, the charcuterie, <laughs> if you will. Um, the, the meal proceeds in cordial terms. It seems that most are focused on eating rather than speaking. Perhaps as a welcome cue. I, um, during the dinner... I try to start up a conversation with uh, specifically first Gloria Hackfield. And, um, you know, uh, in between bites, I, I look up and I say, Gloria, it's uh, excellent to see you in good health. And here I, I, you know, having fought alongside you, it's just good to have you here. I didn't know at the time I was fighting with a king. It was uh, it was a well kept secret at the time, one that very few people knew. I was the last of my line, so for obvious reasons, there were mm. there were secrets to be held. But I was trying to do my part to protect my home. And I hope your friends are okay. R Rudy and and Wrath, was it? Where are they? They're on a. Um, a different mission at the moment, uh, trying to procure some lost artifacts that we uh, we are trying to recover from the ruins of Drakenheim. As the two of you speak, Ophelia Reed turns to you, Paluto. She says, 
uh, I heard that you found the shield of St. Vitruvio as well. Where's Sebastian, though? Shouldn't he be here? Yes, uh, Sebastian is, is uh, um, off dealing with other business. He he seeks the other relics of St. Vitruvio. Uh, <laughs> uh, Over at you, I'm like, what? Pro probably. You know, Sebastian, he's just getting it. This pudding is so good. Oh. I, I see. That might be important to bring up later then. I hope he's all right. He, he, he is. Uh, I know he's had his challenges with um, his digestive tract uh, because of the towels. Um, but uh, so far... Uh, he is finding his own uh, as he becomes a more senior member uh, of the Academy. And as the two of you speak, Uriel Radley turns to you, Veo, and says, Now how is it that you came to be the Lord Commander of Westmar? I haven't heard your name before. Uh, are, are you part of a noble family, or how did you get the, the, this whole post? I, I, I understand you've been doing some things with this Lord Paluto Jackson feller, but uh, tell me why? Why is it? I thought Elias Drexel was the commander. That's true. He he, he was, and then he's my rightest hand man. In this, but um, well, my my father was uh, the steward of Drakenheim, so a very important man. So I mean, I'm a little bit well known. I don't know if you've ever been to Drakenheim, but I am very well known there, and I've done some deeds, right, Pluto? Deeds. Deeds. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Well, I reckon I very I, good I, deeds. I mean, I haven't been to Drakenheim since the troubles befell it. Mind yeah. Uh, I seem to recall, was it Lord Eisner? Was, was that, is that your father? Y y yes. Um, uh, jo Johan Eisner is my, he's my father. Um, yeah, if you haven't been before, you probably wouldn't have heard of me. I'm very well known there now. Veo all is around. the ultimate guide, um, in the city. I know all uh, the grannies. Knows uh, every which way. Um, invaluable. Mm -hmm. uh, see. A lot of knowledge of the city. And I've helped to bring the, um, hopefully, honor a little bit back to the Hooded Lanterns and what we do, protecting our city and getting information and Holding back those monsters from getting to the rest of the world. <laughs> right, right. He's so shiny. I don't know. <laughs> well, I just... I must admit, I'm not sure what to make of you yet, Lord Commander Bayo Senya. Can't decide whether you're just one who's trying to survive... Or whether you're trying to do the right thing. Oh. Everything we do starts with survival. <laughs> but. My hope is that I can help. Those who are in my care thrive. No matter where they are. Right. Right. You notice as he speaks with you. He actually doesn't make eye contact directly and he very deliberately avoids it the few times though they have, thanks to your quick perception for the briefest moment you're able to catch his eyes and yours and there's almost a pull that you sense from him. 
Like, if you actually did make eye contact with him, something could happen to you. Um... Like, do I get a sense that it's a bad thing? Or just something? You've felt that he's very shiny. But... Looking in his eyes would be like looking into a very deep mirror. Hmm. I want to keep my eye on him closely. I like laser. Not in it, but not the don't like. Not in his <laughs> eyes, but like around. I, like there's something that's just like makes my ears twitch a little bit, where I'm just like, okay, I'm not letting my eyes off of you. All right. As the plates are cleared and dinner finishes, a the the other serving people come around and offer some more wine or some spirits to those who want it. Uriel Radley noticeably and the flame keepers have all been drinking water. Kind of. I've, I've only had one glass of wine and I refuse the rest. Well, I must confess that was the best meal I've had probably in the better part of a year. Thank you. I must confess the same. So pleasure, pleasure to share such a great feast with great people. Very well, very well then. So. We, we really do hope that the, that the food uh, accommodates the conversation uh, and that things uh, can progress smoothly. I, I don't believe there's any ill manners uh, to be found. I don't believe there are either, but there is bad blood between us all. There have been decisions that have been made by beg pardon without the authority of your king that have led to this moment. And I understand that you, Lord Commander, and you, Prince Jackson, and you, Lieutenant Commander, have been making some decisions that by rights are not your authority to make, and have been making some choices that are turning both yourselves and this nation of Westamar, which is a great nation, a friend of, of the Illyrian people, a peace that has endured some time. Those choices have jeopardized that relationship. Now, I'm here to mend that relationship. And I would rather use my hammer to build than use it to break. Uriel, you're absolutely right. And I think we can all agree that we want to see we want to see the, the construction of of good things and i i will not say that every decision we make is the right one at the time no indeed i think that you have made the wrong ones but i i the the decisions 
that may have led you here to need to mend were were made in haste and made to deal with the situation at hand and and i and i firmly believe that if we analyze um the the time and the actions that you've taken in your lifetime we could find those too and and we're here to move forward not look back so long as you move forward towards the light and do not stray into the darkness one may stumble into the night as far as one might but one need only look back onto their shoulder to see the light still shines you have wandered far but it is time for you to turn back to the light it is time now there are some things that we that I bring as High Paladin, member of our council, our cabinet in Illyria, as a representative of the Divine Matriarch Mercy V, and of the Lord Regent Polonius Reed, I have been appointed by the authority of our church and our state to make these deliberations here today and to hopefully come to some kind of agreement. And now Mercy the Fifth, as befits her name, has authorized me to offer a great deal. And I think that you will find that righteousness brings its rewards. But High Flame Keeper Reed, would you please share with us what the Divine Matriarch offers our friends in Westamar. Ophelia Reed stands. She produces a scroll. She holds it up and it has the seal of the Divine Matrix. She unseals the missive. She says, Now, I have been, all, have been asked by our divine matriarch to share with you these offerings with the hope that they will bring peace to us. The divine matriarch and under the authorization of our lord regent Polonius Reed and the High Paladin are willing to withdraw our forces from, Illyri from Westamar and return to Illyria immediately. We are willing to do this. However, we have a few things that we would like to offer in addition to this. First thing is that the nation of Illyria would like to extend a loan in the order of 20 million gold pieces to the nation of Westamar to facilitate the rebuilding of this broken nation. Upon agreement and the faithful keeping to our terms of our agreement, Illyria will forgive up to 50% in the in the amount of 10 million gold pieces of this loan, subject to some terms over time. And of course, the, the grant will be given over a period of about 10 to 20 years. We'll work out the terms. But the wealth of Illyria will come to the aid of Westamar in its time of need and rebuilding with a spirit of healing and light. And to this, we would also like to extend the offer to call upon our flame keepers in Illyria and appoint them to the towns and cities of Westamar to serve as a pillar of these communities to facilitate their healing, but also to extend the training and the teachings so that more flame keepers may take up the mantle from Westamar itself. 
in addition to this. The Silver Order has operated as an Illyrian knightly order. But with the authorization of the High Paladin and the Divine Matriarch, we would like to extend the offer to consecrate a Westamar Cadet Branch of the Silver Order with its own Grand Paladin. This order would then be, be composed of knights consecrated in Westamar, paladins called up to serve Westamar, so that there is a presence of the Sacred Flame in Westamar to defend the people from the night that is the, the, the darkness that is encro encroaching. Finally, in addition to this, upon the agreement of what to be done with the relics of Saint Vitruvio, we, the Divine Matriarch, will travel to Drakenheim personally to resurrect the dragon. And In addition, personally, crown King Willem. This is what we offer. Thank you. Uh, that's in incredible. Um... That all sounds very much in line with uh, what we were hoping to accomplish here. Um, I, I, I might have to ponder on some of those points to make sure that I'm clear on the intention behind them and to make sure that all parties are happy with them, but yeah. So to review, there would be a substantial loan from the great kingdom of Valyria. There would be the presence of teaching of the of the the flame. Um, there would be warriors who would train under the the wisdom and the guidance of Illyria and what, what, what else? They're going to resurrect the dragon Argonoth, and resurrect withdraw dragon. their forces, give us a loan for giving half of it. Uh, Westamar will have their own branch of the silver order, which Westamar gets to control and elect under the guidance of Illyria. Correct. Yeah. I have a question. Ophelia you nods. say you're withdrawing your forces and yet you want to draw up Silver Order army within Westmar. We do all this. If Westamar does something that Illyria does not like in the future, what stops them from having those soldiers already ready to go on the ground? Well, these soldiers, of course, would not be Illyrian soldiers. They would be knights, trained, consecrated, sworn, and born of Westamar. We expect that this new branch of the Silver Order would not be ready to operate at full strength for several years, perhaps even not until the loan is actually complete, but they would be, the this branch of the Silver Order would not answer to Illyria. Like any knightly order, it would still follow the, the heat, the, the 
proclamations of the Divine Matriarch, but it would be independent of the Illyrian Silver War. But still calling back to the Matriarch from Illyria. We are all joined by our faith in the Sacred Flame. All of us are united by the Divine Matriarch across all of our nations. Yes, the Divine Matriarch has great deal of spiritual influence in Illyria, but she's not the ruler of Illyria. That falls to the Lord Regent. The loan is issued by the Lord Regent and the government of Illyria, in addition to contributions to the church. And who issued the soldiers to come here now? Uriel Radley speaks up. Now, our soldiers have come here in response to your actions and choices. And we are more than willing to remove them. This is an offer. If you do not want us to form a cadet branch of the Silver Order, that is yours to do. If you don't want it, we don't have to do it. We're not offering saying we don't it want to it. You. not saying we don't want it. I want to understand, as someone who has lived in Westmar her whole life, I want to make sure I'm protecting the innocent who would be thus affected by the war and any future wars that might come in respect to these soldiers who are here. Uh, Uriel, before before you go on, just uh, what Veo is asking a simple question, and it's not about whether or not we want the cadet branch. Thank you graciously for the offer. It is extremely interesting. But she does ask a valid question. Who ordered the Illyrian army to march into Westmar currently. Was it the Lord Regent or was it the Divine Matriarch? We operate under the decree of the Divine Matriarch. So, just to make sure I'm getting this straight, I, I again, I don't want to jump to any conclusions, so I'm going to say some things and you're going to tell me if I'm incorrect or if there's a miscommunication, but we are all united in the guidance of the Divine Matriarch, all nations, but the Divine Matriarch is not the leader of Illyria. The Lord Regent is. However, as you just stated, the Divine Matriarch has been able to call upon the forces of Illyria, including the Silver Order, to follow her guidance to march on Westamar. So if we did have a cadet branch that was born of Westamar, dedicated to Westamar and honored Westamar, but we came to an, a, disagree a disagreement with Illyria, would the Divine Matriarch just be able to say, well, kill the Westamarians and all of a sudden she does have that power? Yuri Radley looks at Ophelia Reed and back again. Formally speaking, Silver Order has been founded not to fight a political mission, and our deployment here is not an invasion of your nation. It is a crusade against the darkness spreading your corrupted capital. We are not here to conquer your people. We are not here to dethrone you, your majesty. We are here to do must, what must be done at the decree and wisdom of the divine matriarch. We are aided by soldiers sent from the Illyrian houses in this mission because when at our first mission that was under the command of a man who I love, respect, and miss very much Theodore Marshall. They came out of a sense of duty, out of a sense to do what was right, out of a sense to do what needed to be done to help Westamar. And our initial forces fought alongside your forces. They shed blood together against the darkness. They fought together against the darkness. And then were turned away and betrayed. 
Now we thought, and I thought, that we were all working together to share the same goal. And I want to just tell you that we are here to do the right thing. We are here to cleanse this nation of the affliction which grips it, the darkness which festers in the heart of your city. But we recognize that this has been a, mi uh, a mission that has been politically complicated. And I hope to respect your authority as the ruler of your nation and I hope that we can work to, alongside each other to do what needs to be done and now if in the future there are di disagreements between Westamar and Illyria over other politics it has never been the mission of the Silver Order to intervene in those ways the Silver Order exists to protect all people from the darkness which encroaches this world as a whole and we will continue to do that mission. Now, when, and when it comes to the wars of men and the petty concerns of us, of us as mortals and politics, we don't want to be involved in it. That's not our business. Thank you for clearing that up, Uriel. That was very well spoken. I am glad that we have an understanding. I, what you offer is exceptional. So you, you I, I, I really wish to ask about an individual. Um, I want to know what you plan to do with Lucretia Matthias. Shall we get to the other side of this conversation, man? Because I have been sent with some demands. I feel they are reasonable. I hope you will see, see them the same way. One of our demands is that we would like your assistance and help in capturing Lucretia Matthias so that she may be brought to account in Lumen before the Divine Matriarch for her blasphemy and tried accordingly. I, I'm sure that we can discuss that matter. It, uh... Very well then. In addition, first of all, we would like to hear your agreement as king of Westamar and your resolution that delirium must be destroyed. We would like to see your commitment to destroying all the delirium in Drakenheim and with the knowledge that we will be providing ample funds through the form of a loan to rebuild the city to do what must be done to ensure that every scrap of those blasphemous phones are, stones are destroyed. Every last one. Furthermore, we would like you to formally censure the Amethyst Academy's continued use of delirium and forbid the nobility from purchasing anything made by the Amethyst Academy using delirium. Effectively, if there is any out there, we know that there's going to be more out there. It's going to take us years. We just don't want the Academy sailing in it. We want to put an end to it. As you also know, the Divine Matriarch has offered to personally crown you as king. We would very much like that to happen. And as well, to you respect the previous agreements that were in place before this whole thing went down and allow the Divine Matriarch 
to appoint Ophelia Reed as your High Flamekeeper. Finally, recognizing that this is a little bit of a touch of subject, we would like Westamar to come to the table to renegotiate the Edicts of Lumen to formally prohibit the sale of magical services using arcane magic by the Academy. Finally, we would like you to surrender the relics of St. Vitruvio to the Silver Order with the knowledge that we will turn these relics over to the Westamar branch of the Silver Order when it is founded. Finally, we would like you to turn over Sebastian Crow so that he may be properly executed for murder of Silver Order. We recognize the complicity of Julio Jackson and Veo Senya, but by dint of their noble titles and station, we will overlook theirs, their, their accessory to those murders. Anything else? That is all. I think sink in, just letting it just trying to I think um there are a lot of valid negotiating terms here. I think that everything you've asked for in a manner of speaking is fair. I do not believe I can agree 100%. As this is a negotiation, I do believe that we obtain the right to hopefully come to a fair middle ground on some of these terms. I hear what you're saying, and for a lot of these points, we are on the same page. Westmar and Illyria want the same thing. We all know why Illyria's here, and I was originally touring Westmar for the same goals that Illyria has. We all know it. Everybody in this room knows it. We stand on the brink of annihilation. And what this continent needs right now is a show of peace and of goodwill. Drakenheim is no more. And for 15 years, our nation has lied in ruins with nothing but bloodshed and war. Families have been torn apart. Soldiers died for squabbles between kingdoms. All the while, the real enemy that we have had to face this whole time has been delirium. And it keeps creeping further and further from the borders of our city. I don't seek war, I, I don't seek power struggles or, or political gain. My position here as King of Westamar was not one that I ever wanted, but I hope to use it to do what's right. What I seek are allies who share a simple and common goal that we do agree on. Delirium must be destroyed. It threatens our world, our way of life. It's, it's, it's caused nothing but, but terror uh, and, 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 and war. That's why I'm here. I believe Illyria shares the same goals as myself, and in turn, any kingdom that I claim shares those goals as well. 
And if we can find a way to work together, when the dust settles, the people of this continent will remember those who stood against the growing darkness. The people may not understand the terror of delirium the way we do, but I have traveled through much of Westmar, and I know for a fact that the people of this nation have felt the impact of it and will remember it for years to come. We are all living through a historical event, unlike any that's come before. We sing songs and tell stories of great wars and valiant heroes, but tomorrow's songs will be of the decisions that we make today. And I hope to hear songs of peace, of nations setting aside their differences for a moment to face threats that affect all of us. And in those songs, they'll sing of how we work together for a better future for them, the people of our nations. And it's time for Illyria to write their part in that history and do what's right. And the people of all of our nations are going to be watching. Precisely. Well spoken, Your Majesty, and I share your resolve. I want to implore you that you speak of the bonds between our nations. The bonds between Westamar, Caspia, and Eve, Westamar, Illyria, and even Caspia. We can work together to overcome this threat that faces us all. But we need to do what is right, what is righteous, and allow the sacred flame to be our God forward. We have allowed a demagogue and sorcerers to lead us towards the path of darkness and destruction. We have allowed a demagogue heretic and lying mages to poison our ideas with promises of wealth and prophecies that are going to fail that are going to bring nothing but ruin. Our nations can work together, but our houses have to get themselves in order because it is not the nations that have had trouble working together. We are people are being led astray. It is people, not the nations that we need to get to, together here. Uriel, I see your point. And I need you to listen to me as a comrade, as somebody who shares the same goals as me. Well, I don't know if you do, because I see you wearing a fancy suit of armor made by the Amethyst Academy in sorcelled with the very delirium that we are calling you to destroy. This suit has delirium in it? Nobody told me. Listen. I, that is just being brought to my attention right now. I didn't notice. I thought the purple hue was just a color factor. That's not the point. I will dismiss this armor once... I mean, it's protective to make sure that I don't get... Okay, I'm getting to my point. I hear you on the way the mages have behaved and the misguided notions that they've had, but I myself have dealt with members of the Amethyst Academy who do not necessarily share these ideals. And something that you, Uriel, and the people of Illyria and the Silver Order need to understand is that when you speak of mages, you're painting a very large picture over a group of people who do not all fall into that category. We are not calling for the destruction of the Amethyst Academy by any means at all. But the Academy has been ruled by its most radical, power-hungry, and misguided individuals. Now, it's on the Academy to get themselves in order. But we, as the rest of the world, have to stand up to them and say, no, you are not going to meddle with this magic that is beyond your control and understanding. We have to tell them no, and then they can get themselves in order. And if they can't, well, maybe we should form up and make sure that they're monitored a little bit more closely. Maybe we should have our own representatives 
They don't let us into their towers. They don't let us into their strongholds. We have no idea what they're really doing. They could be watching us right now for all we know. Uriel, I actually agree with you. And I think that something that is important is that when we reinstate the Edicts of Lumen, we need to come to a balance of power. And it is true that the Academy has overstepped their balance of power. Here's what I will say. I think, just as any of us could travel to Lumen and step foot into the great cathedral and stand before the Divine Matriarch, listen to her words, and take prayer at her altars, the Amethyst Academy should be as open as the faith. The Directorate should be known. And so, when I am elected king, together with the faith and the monarchy, we will have the power to put the Amethyst Academy in their place. I don't fully agree with you, but I do agree with you on this. We should be able to know what is going on behind the closed doors of Amethyst Academy strongholds. It's important that the world knows what magic is producing for us, and magic can be used to help us. I've heard stories of mages conjuring ores when there were none, and helping people in many other ways that I'm not thinking of right now. but. We don't know what goes, on, goes on behind on. closed doors. And we don't know who most of the directors are. And I take issue with that as well. But two points that I think I might need to call you on to say that it is unnecessary. We will destroy delirium. The Amethyst Academy existed before Delirium was a presence here, and they can exist after. The core purpose of the Amethyst Academy was to protect Mageborn from the problematic behaviors of the Sorcerer Kings. And I still think that they deserve that right to train Mageborn students in open schools where we know what they are being taught. The production of magic items has been an important and valuable asset to all the nations. I do not think that we need to strip the academy or make it illegal for them to sell magical wares once delirium is no longer a factor. If we can get them to agree to announce who the directorate is and open, have the directorate be part of the collective council of our continent to meet with the faith and the monarchs together stripped of delirium in open source schools that we know about that we can monitor that all of us can keep track of the faith the monarchy and the academy all at the same time if we can keep each other in check then we can use magic to better all of our nations together, and there is no need to put further restrictions on the Academy if they are working under the same laws as the rest of us. All monarchs have to step forward and announce who they are. Every monarch is known in our continent. Every great flame keeper is known, and so too the Academy should be held to the same accountability but they shouldn't be held to any further restrictions beyond what the rest of us are held to. Deo Pluto, do you, either you want to jump in? Yeah, uh, I agree. The Academy has become a bit of a war profiteer. Uh, we being in the city, the delirium is it it you you use the danger around you to fight the danger around you. And I would admit 
that. We have met some mages. For a while, I was killing mages, you know? I was I was on a mission. I was putting in the work. But... The, no, instead you decided to kill a righteous man. We dueled. Uh, he lost. Uh, it's like a game of cards. Um, what I would say is there is... There is much that they can offer. Uh, it is the it is the transparency that that has shaken us, and there are individuals who wish to change that. And just like the people that you support with the flame, there are people within the academy that do not seek power they seek knowledge and for them the knowledge is your wisdom it is what they hold above most just like I'm sure we've heard stories of 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 mages seeking to right the wrongs of this world. I have met some some incredible mageborn who only wish to to help. Ophelia it, Reed speaks up. I know that mages like Eldrick and River were nice folks. But Veo, when we stood in the cathedral of St. Vitruvio all that time ago, Queen Lenore proclaimed you the Lord Commander. Theodore Marshall asked you to choose whether you would work with us or whether you'd work with the Academy. Do you regret that choice? I am not the same person I was then, and I have new knowledge than what I know had known what I regret is that Theodore Marshall would not be open to working with the Academy like King Wilhelm his majesty is asking us to do now to come together the church the nation and the Academy to make sure that power is balanced. At that time, Theodore did not make it clear that he wanted balance. He wanted just us on his side. What I want now going forward is I would make the decision that leads us to balance. Uriel Radley, Bonsk. Now I worry, Lord Commander, that you have a little bit of a warped view of what constitutes balance. Do you believe that we should have equality between the nations of this continent, between our faith and the Amethyst Academy? I think everybody deserves a chance to make their way in this world. But I don't do believe that lording over a group, cutting them off the knees to be able to seek their knowledge over yours is right. We are talking about folks who, far be it from needing their kneecaps, can snap their fingers and turn us to ash. And you stood there and you watched one of them with the words of the sacred flame on his lips. Flame be with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I also saw was the group of those soldiers not respecting the words of their captain and the battle or duel that I saw the results of. Just remember that no matter how thin you make a pancake, there's always two sides. 
Those were brave soldiers. And they did what they thought was right. They were overcome by grief. Mm. And then maybe they need to be trained better to deal with their grief. Because what they did is overstepped and caused a another good man to make a bad decision. Why didn't you talk them down? Why didn't you try to stop that from happening? Why did you just let that mage set fire to them? We did try to say something. Pluto, you said something. He... We cannot force people to make decisions. When I when I think of what the flame is, it is not it is not the this is what I should do. It is the reflection on what I have done. And yes, terrible things have happened on both sides. But like we said at the beginning, we're moving forward. And you will only find pain if you continue to look at the past. We have a city that is dripping with corruption and you aim to fix it and you want our help and it's what we want too but we can't get there if we continue to look at the actions of the few especially if those few can make better change now you're, Very you're. well, then. You, Little Jackson, in the interest of putting down the past, will you surrender Ignatius and the shield of St. Vitruvia? Will you turn them over to us? I do have one question. The dragon. Why do you wish to resurrect it? Ophelia Reed speaks up. Now, the flames of Argonne burn white hot, just like the sacred flame at least according to legend. We know that with our power, we can turn delirium to ash. And so, we can raise Argonath. The dragon might be our best shot of actually getting rid of the delirium. Pluto, if I may, I just want to ask this question in case there's an accord we might be able to come to, but the relics of St. Vitruvio were part of Drakenheim, and it's Drakenheim that you wish to burn to the ground. Now, I fully agree that we should hand over the relics of St. Vitruvio to the faith. Pluto Jackson himself was able to uncover and claim Ignatius, which I'm told Ignatius has to choose to be obtained by somebody with the willpower to wield it. The shield lost in the ruins was claimed by Pluto Jackson. I killed the demon for it, actually. Pluto yeah, Jackson sure you can fought it. against Impressive. literal demons, which I'm pretty sure is a righteous act. Hmm. I think that we should hand over the relics of St. Vitruvio. But you have one of the greatest warriors who perhaps... And Pluto, I don't want to put any words in your mouth, so you can definitely also say no to this, but he I'll could swear it. an oath 
to the flame. Take up the relics of St. Vitruvio and use them as a symbol of the faith to help us in the battles to come. Once delirium is destroyed, we will hand over the relics without question. Now this Ludo Jackson, you're brave. You're a brave man. I have no doubt. Oh, yeah. But you do not have the righteousness to take up an oath, do you? Why did Ignatius choose him? I I may not I may not be fit for your eyes when I look at the high paladins and the high priestess and the flame keepers you might look upon me and see just uh, 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 another Caspian out for glory but I'll tell you this Ignatius, we bonded. Hmm. Okay. Tell him, tell him, Ignatius. Tell him, <laughs> tell him about how, tell him about how I'm doing real good lately. Okay. And he's on, he's he's on the wall. I think, <laughs> I think he's on the wall. Very well then. And the shield, the shield of Saint Vitruvio. It, it was not an easy relic to acquire and as a as a sign um of the incoming Illyrian alliance i would happily carry these two two artifacts through to the 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 heart of of the crater and plunge ignatius into its core and show that thing and drive its corruptness out of here. Here's how I see it. If you want to go around acting like might makes right, then you can put up with me. I challenge you to a duel, Jackson. The terms are this. If you should win this duel, you may keep the relics of St. Vitru. We will spare your friend Sebastian Crew. And we will. Oh, yeah, we didn't even get to that. There's, there's just no <laughs> way. And we yeah, will. Sorry, there's just no we way. We will entertain. I see that we are agreed on the destruction of Delirium. And we can the, discuss. It's bad. What it's to be pretty done. bad. Yeah, it's, the, it gets really bad. And I can see that we are in agreement about Lucretia Matthias. Lucretia is a um, is a sore spot. She was uh, helpful in the driving out of another evil force from Drakenheim, but she has become something that I do not know if we fully understand or can control. Very well, then. If you agree to these terms, then you will agree to... I will accept them contingent on our duel. Me and you. I will add one stipulation from our end, since you have laid out your end of the bargain. Since you are on Westamar soil, and as the future king of Westamar... I would like to state that we get to choose the type of duel that will be performed here. You are dealing with the King of Westmar and a Prince of Caspia, and you, a representative from Illyria. So all three dueling styles are on the table. All right, give me a persuasion check with advantage. Can I somewhere in there have cast panache on him? <laughs> Or use my panache ability, or would I have had to awkwardly have said that in the middle of my speech? Um, does Uriel or Radley cannot actually not be charmed? Well, there you go. I yeah. tried my best. All right. <laughs> I'm still giving you advantage, though. So 
It's good. Oh, nice. I should look at my character sheet. Uh, what is my persuasion? Oh, nice. I rolled a 20. Um, so that is going to be 27 persuasion. Very well. What type of duel do you want? Uh, Pluto Jackson, I think it's fair as the one dueling that you choose. I have a thirst for the duel, but enough blood has been spilled over petty things. A Caspian duel it is. And that is where we'll end for the night. Oh, <laughs> Woo. oh, oh that was great. That was great. <laughs> a Caspian duel. Uh, the, the High Paladin says, very well then. Caspian duel you'll have. That's what we needed. Oh, good, great. To save Sebastian. <laughs> we're going on a monster hunt to save Sebastian. Yeah, so yeah, we we were just like yeah, like Sebastian wasn't even on the table. We, and we didn't even get a chance to get to we that negotiation part. Like, you're not touching our friends. I was, yeah, it wasn't I was even like, like a. I was wasn't getting there to. in my like negotiating the Amethyst Academy and their usefulness, but we kind of yeah. Sebastian Crow was off the table. I was trying yeah, to. We get were there. so focused on like <laughs> banishing the academy. <laughs> it's like we we just didn't quite get to Sebastian. Yet. Just well, know, right. Sebastian, if you're out there, we love you. So I guess <laughs> uh, I I guess with with that, you will have one week to hunt down the biggest monster. Guys, do we know about a huge monster somewhere in Drakenheim that we haven't killed? There was this, like, sea I've monster. got it. There's so much at the castle, it's not funny. <laughs> I know, I, I have an idea, but I'm saving it. Okay. Because I want to say it off stream. <laughs> All right. I, I, but Surprise. I All right, we got, some, we, we got some surprises. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, with that, a big thank you to our amazing cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, for playing tonight. And a huge thank you to Kyle for keeping things real behind the scenes and doing all of his uh, beautiful music and organizing and editing and uh, just being amazing. And also a huge thank you to our dungeon master, Monty Martin. Um, I think we rolled a a few dice tonight. I rolled a dice at the end. There was a couple dice rolls, but really cool role play session. Uh, Things were intense. Uh, I love how you know how to just push our characters buttons. It's great. Start. I love it. So good. So good. Thank you. And we got a chance to see some uh, some great uh, maps, um, including the map of uh, Drakenheim, um, the the castle. So we got to see a little bit of Roll20, uh, some uh, amazing assets. Uh, yeah, this was used. this map was by Venatus Maps. Uh, really, really awesome. Check them out on Patreon. Great. And of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Juice t-shirts, including Yes, 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 uh, and Dragon Force, and all the things. So take a look at the .ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Kelly and I post new videos every Tuesday, every other Tuesday, and every Thursday on our YouTube channel. So make sure you check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. And uh, don't forget to join us on Patreon. You can uh, patreon.com slash Dungeon Dudes. And we also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons where you can chat with us about all sorts of stuff, uh, everything D&D, everything Drakenheim, and uh, join in on our monthly writer's rooms and our monthly, uh, mostly monthly Q&As, except when we're dying from writing a book. Um <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, we'll be picking those up again very soon. And, uh, yeah, so join us on our Discord and our Patreon. And be sure to join us next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio only podcast as well. Thank you so much to our amazing cast. All of you out there on our Patreon, thank you so much. Once again, we Kelly and I are going to be going to Gen Con uh, in uh, in the first week of August. So if you are uh, going to be going to the big con, best four days, days in gaming, let us know. Um, we'll be follow us on social media. We'll probably be posting some details about maybe some kind of 
fun impromptu get together or gathering of some kind uh at, at the con so with that thank you all so much for watching and we will see you next time in drakenheim